This morning I want to talk to you about joy for the holidays. Joy for the holidays. You know, when I was growing up, Christmas time, I was a child, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was the most exciting time for us. Because I don't remember all the gifts that were given to me, but I do remember what my mother and father would do every Christmas. They would make this gift basket. It'd, be, it'd just be a box, but in that box they would fill it up with candy and nuts and apples, fruits, all kinds of stuff they would put in this thing. They gave to us every single year. It, it was what I looked forward to because it took almost all month to eat all the candy <laughs> that was in this box. It was glorious. And it was the most exciting time for me, but something shifted when I was probably 10, 10 or 11, something like that. My mother and father uh, started the process of a divorce. And in that, things shifted. Things changed. Mom tried to create that same thing, but it was something different uh, whenever Dad was not there and Mom was there and, and it was just, you know, it was a gift box. It was cool, whatever, but it, it just wasn't the same because of the transition we were, we were going through. And years started going by and Christmas didn't seem as exciting anymore. Mom couldn't give the gift baskets anymore. And as we got older, as we were trying to make this transition, we no longer could stay at one location because we would go down to Grandpa's house and all the family would be there and we'd have, you know, uh, we would eat dinner and we would open gifts. I mean, everybody opened gifts. They started from the smallest all the way up to the oldest. Everybody opened <coughs> gifts. It was an all-day situation. It was good. We loved it. But time changed. And when my mother and father got divorced, we had to rotate. Sometimes in life, I see parents in parking lots, and I see a child getting out of one car, transitioning to another car, and I know what it's all about. Because we had to share holidays. One holiday would be with mom, the next holiday would be with dad. And we did that for many, many years. We tried to keep it up, even when I started driving, we would, we would pack in the car, go here, the first half of the day, and then go here the second half of the day. But it never was the same. Holidays were not the same, even, even though we were getting gifts. Because really, church, joy is not found in gifts. Joy is not found in what people give you. True joy, holiday joy, it really comes from Jesus. Amen. And that's what the holidays are all about. It's about Jesus, Christ coming into our lives. And so as I grew up, it, it, Christmas wasn't as exciting. But because I understood that Christ lives in me, and that because of Christ, I can have joy anytime, every time, no matter what the situation is like. Because I can have joy, every day is a good day. Amen. It might not be going good, but every day is still a good day. Because if you got Jesus, you can have joy. Amen. I want to give you my thoughts this morning. The reason why I say you can have joy for the holidays in this text that we just read, this entire narrative, I read it so I can just run right through it and wouldn't have to preach every verse. But in this narrative, I want to show us today that you can have joy for the holidays. You know me for three reasons. Here we go. You can have joy for the holidays, number one, because Jesus brings joy in unusual places. Amen. Jesus brings joy in unusual places. The text opens up for us and letting us know that in, even regardless of your circumstance, Jesus can bring joy. The circumstances of life is Joseph and them had to go down to Bethlehem to have a census done. They had to go to Bethlehem because uh, uh, the governor had called them so they can count all the people. And you had to go to your native land where you came from. And Joseph, not by choice, he is headed back down to Jerusalem. He had nothing to do with him. He was just having to obey what was commanded of them. But in spite of the circumstances of life, you can still have joy. Amen. Even when it's not your fault, God can still bring joy into your life. And even when it is your fault, just give it some time, joy. God can still bring joy into your life. Jesus brings joy in unusual, pla in unusual places in spite of your circumstance, but also in spite of your condition. The text says that Mary is pregnant. Mary's in a condition right now. She is pregnant. And so while she's pregnant, 
she's traveling and to where for, to Bethlehem in this pregnant condition, but it's not just pregnant. She's got a special pregnancy going on. Amen. Okay, her baby daddy ain't even on the earth. Y'all right. uh, with me? Her baby Amen. daddy is God Almighty. You said preaching that's weird. No, this is it's holy. Trust me, it's holy. God uh, overshadowed her with His presence and and placed Jesus on the inside of this Mary so that. Uh, Jesus could come into the world. She's in this condition. She's pregnant. And she is uh, expecting a child. That God will bring joy even in any condition we're in in life. Right. You know, you might not be feeling good in your body this morning, but you know you can still have joy. Right. You may not be feeling good in your finances right now. You done spent too much money for Christmas, but I want you to know you still can have joy. Right. Well, amen. Even while you're paying that bill that you got, you got to pay off, you can still have joy. He gives us joy in unusual places, in regardless of the circumstance, the condition. And watch this, even the challenges of life. Because the text says when they get to Bethlehem, they get to Bethlehem and there's no place to sleep. They get to Bethlehem and they've gone all the way up to, because remember the, the census is happening, so everybody's coming into town. Everybody and their mama is coming into town and they're taking up all the good stuff, places. So they stopped over at the, the Hilton and there's no room in the end. They stopped at the Hampton and there's no room at the end. They went to the Wingate and they went over there to Best Western and there's just no room in the end. And they went over to the only Red Roof Inn in Raleigh and there's no place to lay their head there. They went down to the Super 8 and there's no place. And they even went to Motel 6 where they leave the light on for you. There's nowhere to lay their head. And the text says that the only place they could find a place to lay their head was in a stable. Right. That Jesus, the Savior of the entire world, watch this, wasn't born in a white house, wasn't born in a palace. He wasn't born uh, on cloud nine in the, in the principal suite. He was not born that way. He was born in a stable. In the lowliest conditions of life, he was born even in challenge, which lets you and I know today, listen, you don't need a lot of stuff to have joy this Christmas. Amen. Amen. Sorry, that's a weak amen, but it's true. You don't need all that stuff to have joy on the inside of your heart this Christmas, amen. this holiday season. Here they have a challenge in life. But they are, listen, Jesus is born in a stable. It's not the stable of the Western culture. It's a stable where it's in a cave. And in the cave, they place the animals in the cave. And the Bible says, and he was born and placed in a manger, which was actually a feeding trough for the animals. And sometimes, don't mean to gross you out, the feeding trough was where animals ate their food sometimes. And even sometimes they, they pooped where they ate. Jesus, the lowly Jesus, the mighty king, the savior of the world is placed in a manger, uh, in a stable, in this challenging condition. Listen, Jesus brings joy, watch this, in unusual places. Yes. That's good news this morning. Amen. Everything don't have to be perfect in your life. For the Lord bring joy to your life. You don't have to have all the money. You don't have to say the, all the right prayers. You don't have to do all these things to have Jesus come into your life and bring you joy. Because he'll bring them in the most unusual places. Can you say amen? amen. Secondly, not only does he bring joy in the most unusual places, but he brings joy to unlikely people. Yeah. Did you notice in the text, the Bible says there were shepherds who were living out in the field. I said they were living in the field. I said they were living in the field. You understand? There were shepherds who lived out in the field away from the people. They, these shepherds were unlikely people. Know this. Shepherds were considered the outcast of society. They were some of the unclean people because they dealt with animals all day long. That was their, that was their job. Matter of fact, they couldn't even go to church on a regular basis because they had to work all the time. Their work would keep them away for months. They couldn't go to church, and when they would go to church, they couldn't go uh, and participate because uh, they were not ceremonially clean, because they were dealing with certain kinds of animals. They were shepherds, unlikely people. God sends angels to talk to some unlikely people, some dirty people. Some no good people, some unclean people. He sends angels to speak to unlikely people. And when he gets there, these shepherds who are protecting their flock, he, they're given this sermon of peace, which said to them, he said to this angel, said, stood before them and said to them, listen, uh, joy be to everybody. 
Because joy has come into the world today. A child has been born. Yes. When Michael Jackson's baby, it wasn't Cher's baby, it wasn't um, Tupac's little boy, it was the Savior of the world. Yes. It was Jesus, this baby, this lamb, precious Lamb of God, was brought into the world and he announced peace to everybody, church. Right. That peace doesn't come by the gifts you bring. That's right. Amen. Thank you. That's right. I appreciate them. I'm going to use them for the glory of God. Yeah. But, but at the end, the new car loses its new scent. That's right. The new shoes get worn in and get worn out. That's right. The money gets spent. The sweater get a hole in it. It'll get old. It, those things will perish. They will fade away. The new game you get, you play it, you beat it, then you're ready for another one. It doesn't matter. Those things fade away. But there is a joy. That comes from heaven that is sustained by heaven itself. Amen. It's a joy that can't be taken away. The old saints used to say, this joy I have. The world didn't give it, and the world... Yeah, maybe we believe it, but the text says that he brings a sermon of peace because of the angels speaking to these unlikely people. Not only does he give a sermon of peace, but then he turn around and give them a sign to pursue Watch what happens in the text. The text says that while the angels are with them, they explain that Jesus is in Bethlehem. And he says to them, and he says, and you will find him. There'll be a sign. You will find Jesus wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. He says, here's the sign that if you find Jesus, you'll find him just like we said you'll find him. Here's a sign. If you find Jesus, you'll find him just like we said you'll find him. Here's what he's saying. Here's Jesus, but you have to go for him. Here's Jesus, but you have to go and search for him. The angel never said to them, go down to Bethlehem and go look for Jesus. There he is. The angel never said to them, you got to go find Jesus. You got to go. The angel never says to them, go right now. Do like I say right now. No, he says, when you find him. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you and I will pursue him, we will find him. Let me give you this illustration. Do you know why I give an invitation after every time I preach? It's because there must be a response to the message that's been preached. That's right. I give an invitation because someone must make a decision whether or not they're going to accept Jesus or they're not going to do it. That's why we give the invitation every, every Sunday. I never assume that everybody's saved. I never assume that everyone is right with Jesus. I give the invitation. I never assume that everybody who smiles has the joy of the Lord in their heart. That's right. I give the invitation because somebody must make a decision. And just as the angels came to the shepherds and says, here's the good news about Jesus. Then they said, well, but when you find him, you will find he is exactly where I said he would be. In other words, church, when you and I say, I want Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus. He says to us that we'll find the joy in Jesus just like the word of God says he will be there. He will bring the peace in our lives just like he said he would. Jeremiah 29 said this. He says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. True joy comes from a true search for Jesus Christ. That's right. And the word of God has been presented to us today. That Listen, Jesus will bring joy to even unlikely people. Right. If you're unhappy in your life, Jesus will still bring you joy. If you're in a bad situation. Maybe you're living in sin. If you give Jesus the opportunity, he will bring joy into your heart by setting us free. Church, I'm almost finished. Here's my last point. Not only would Jesus bring joy in unusual places and bring joy to unlikely yeah. people, but church, he'll bring joy, watch this, in unnatural patterns. Do you see that right there? Unnatural yeah. patterns. Watch what the text says. Now, when the angels stop talking, the angels stop talking. Might have been Gabriel. Giving that announcement, the angel stops talking. The Bible says that when they looked up in the sky, it wasn't a bird or a plane. It was the heavenly host of angels. It was a heavenly host of angels that were saying something so powerful. They were saying, glory to God in the highest. Now let's back up again. Now let's back up again. Because he brings joy in unnatural patterns. Yes. An angel is talking and then the heavens open up and here comes a praise break. Oh, here comes a praise right. break. I don't know if it was a Baptist praise break or a Pentecostal <laughs> praise break. 
Praise break. I back this one and the was saying, would you turn to your hymnals 495? I don't know if it was that kind of praise break or Pentecostal. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the I don't know which praise break style it was, but he brings this, this powerful example of praise and the heavenly host come down and begin to glorify God. Amen. Let's do it from a different perspective. They begin not to glorify. Listen, they're not praising because they got new camels. They're not praising because they got uh, new clothes to wear outside at, while they're doing their thing. No, those angels came giving glory because the yeah. Savior had come into the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> angels are glorifying God because the Savior has come to humanity. Angels are glorifying God because, listen, you they know what it's like to be in the presence of God. Yeah. They know the salvation power that is right there on the throne of heaven. Angels know the glory and the majesty of our almighty king, and they are giving God praise, oh, church, yeah. because this glory has been given to all humanity. Yeah. Oh, this glory has been given to us as a gift that one day, you don't know it, they, they said you didn't even know it's going to be like that, but in one day, the Savior is going to come and He's going to set men and women free for all eternity. That's good news on a Sunday morning. That's great news on a Sunday morning. They give glory to God for His goodness. They give glory to God for His greatness. They give glory to God for His grace, church. That you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do all the right things. You just put your faith and trust in Jesus. Amen. And he works in your life. Can you say amen? amen? He'll bring joy into your life. This is good news. They bring joy, listen, in an unnatural pattern. Because they praise God with all of their heart. With, with the angels are glorifying God. Do we do that? Can we praise God? In unusual places, are we able to praise God, uh, knowing that we are not, uh, we haven't, uh, not experiencing the best that life has to offer? They give praise and glory to God, which lets us know that no matter what you're going through, you ought to always give God glory. That right. you ought to always give God praise. And we ought to always glorify the Lord. We should always magnify the Lord. You don't have to shout. You don't have to dance. But you should always be giving God praise. That even in spite of what I may have lost, Lord, you're still worthy to be praised. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, in spite of what I did not get, Lord, you're still worthy to be praised. Matter of fact, God, I thank you for what you didn't allow to come. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you look beyond all my faults and you saw my needs. You are worthy to be praised. He brings joy in an unusual pattern. So watch what happens. So here it is. Finally, the last three things I want to show you. So when this joy comes, when this praise breaks happen in front of these shepherds, these shepherds looking at each other like, oh my God, did you see that? No, did you? No, no, no. Did you see that? Did you see the angel? Did you hear what the angel said? Did you see all of heaven having this praise break service about this Jesus? This is what they said from verses uh, 15 to verse 20. They said, well, let us go and see this thing for ourselves. Yes. What they had in their life, watch this, was a turning point. Amen. They had a turning point. These shepherds. These shepherds of low class, these shepherds who were nobodies, they had a turning point in their hearts which brought about an expectation yes. that if God can do this in this way, I know God can take care of this in this way. If God will show out like this in this particular way, I know no matter what's going on, he's going to show out and bless and open up ways and doors and give me understanding in a different way. If he can bring joy in the midst of sorrow, I know he can bring me happiness tomorrow. Whatever it is going on, they have this expectation in their hearts. Because of the praise that they saw going on in heaven. Amen. Not only did they have a turning point, church, but they got up. The text says when they got up with this thing in mind, it was an expectation. They went down to see the baby Jesus. And guess what? It was just like they said it was. Amen. There he was, sweet baby Jesus, laying in a manger. There he was, sweet Jesus, who was full of this joy to the world. There he is, this baby Jesus. And when they saw Jesus in the manger, the text says they had a testimony. Yes. 
They looked at Mary and said, you're not going to believe what happened to us. We were out there in the field, and I was pooping, scooping up, and I happened to look up, and there was an angel telling me about this baby that I'm looking at right here. And he said, whenever we, we, the, he got finished talking, the heavens opened up, and you should have saw Mama and them praising God. You should have saw my granddad. You should have saw the angels. They were shouting and rejoicing because joy had come to the world. Yes. That's such good news. I can barely to keep in my heart. Lord. Joy came to the world not because we paid for it, but because he died on the cross for us. Joy is in the world today not because you and I have earned it, but because Jesus died on the cross for us today. Finally, not only do they have a testimony, but they had a time with the Lord. The text says, when they left Mary, after just spreading that good news, the Bible says, verse 20, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Joy does not come by gifts. Joy comes from the Lord. Amen. You can have, we can have, all of us can have joy this holiday season. Yeah. Listen, I'm trying to talk to you in a deeper way than the superficial things in life that we have. Because the technology, the things that we have, they only last for a season. But joy is eternal, church. Joy is eternal. The love of God is so priceless and so precious, church, that it will take the heaviest burden you have, and God himself will lift it and give you joy in its place. One, I think one writer says, he says he pulls off the, uh, the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. God knows how to lift your heavy, burdened heart. He also knows how, listen, if you keep your focus right, so what you don't have that mate, that boo this holiday season? It's all right. And this is the season now where people get the, uh, what's called the, uh, the holiday blues. It's the most depressing season of the year. Because people are thinking about what they should have and who they want to be with. And sometimes life just doesn't work out that way. Amen. It just doesn't work out that way. And you have a choice. I'm going to be bloom, gloomy and I'm going to be down and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be all into myself. Or you can realize, you know what, God's giving me a joy in my heart. God's giving me an opportunity today. God's giving me life and breath. I can use it to whine and complain and to cry and to talk about my shoulda, coulda, wouldas and how I want it but I can't get it. Or I can lift up my eyes towards the hills which come with my help and say so all of my help comes from the Lord and everything that I need God has already provided and I've got joy not because of what I got or did not get I've got joy because of who is living in my heart I'm done church I can't give you no more I don't think you take any more God brings joy in this holiday season you need to know that in case you lose your job you need to know that in case you lose a loved one. You need to know that in case you lose a pair of your shoes. You need to know that, that God brings joy into your heart because that's what he does. Joy for the holidays, church. Let's bow our heads and have prayer.